Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Brett and I, Millimeter USA Senior here today. And well, today it's custom day. We're gonna talk about two custom 1911s right here. They are beautiful commanders. This is a Cabot Guns National Standard starting at $52.95, $5,295. And this is the Spardella full stroke commander both of them 4.25 inch barrel this spardella is made by one man and he does a wonderful job the cabot we've had some issues with the cabot if you've uh, followed the channel for a while you know this gun was not operable no mem or cast parts in these pistols you pay this kind of money you expect that you want a thousand dollar or thirteen hundred dollar 1911 from springfield armory and you're going to be dealing with some mem even the folks at les bear have some cast parts, small parts, nothing vitally important, but they do have it. Wilson Combat is more like these guys where everything is forged, tool, steel type thing, very high quality as far as all the parts and pieces that they put into it. So that's something that you're gonna have here that you're not gonna have in Springfield Armory, which is one of my favorite 1911s. Also, you guys know Les Bear is one of my all time favorite 1911s and they also have some parts that aren't totally tool steel or forged steel. So I've heard about it. What did we hear issues with a couple of Les Bear parts after like 40 or 50,000 rounds and uh, couple parts broke and he had to have a gun serviced and fixed. Okay, well, you know, Glocks break too. I had uh, a service Glock that had parts breaking in it at around the 18 to 20,000 mark in a 40 caliber Glock. So, and I attribute that to just the ramming and battering that goes on with a 40 caliber Glock going off uh, over and over and over and over again. And we put a lot of rounds through those pistols and sooner or later little parts holding the guns together started breaking i still think you get a lot more going out of these metal guns whether it's a 1911 or a beretta or a sig over some of the plastic guns and i just like the feeling and the visual of these guns over just another plastic glock or just another m p or just another hellcat love the hellcat I was talking to a guy at a gun store recently saying you know for a little hideaway gun get a nine millimeter at least try to stay away from the 380 and smaller if you if you possibly can. Same thing goes with the female shooter. So deep cover male, deep cover female, I don't care who you are, try to stay with a 9mm. But when you get up to these fuller size guns and these quality built 1911s, try to buy the best quality that you can. This is a full cycle commander size 4.25 inch barrel and this is a full stroke commander size 4.25 inch barrel when you get to the specifics of either the full cycle or the full stroke as far as these commanders are concerned spardella gives you more information on that let me read from their website right here the 4.25 inch barrel commander with full stroke design the slide has the same length of travel as a five inch gun which leads to more consistent ejection and better reliability versus a traditional commander. I also think it has a smoother working of the slide in these as compared to a regular chopped off commander pistol in 1911 from most companies. These guys are stepping up. They're trying to give you a better gun by their full stroke or full cycle this uh, is the Cabot that absolutely would not run when I first purchased it. We ordered it exactly how we wanted it, special order, waited almost a year to get the gun, and then uh, the gun was inoperable when it first came to us. It had all kinds of issues that needed to be addressed that were not caught during the manufacturing and not sure how that happened but that was one of our horror stories with Cabot guns and Alchemy Arms. Cabot guns, just in case you forget, it says it right there. Cabot guns. Top serrations are done on this too. It has a larger gold bead, which I really do like. The Spardella Arms comes with all of the edges rounded out for a snag-free draw if you happen to use it for a carry piece, EDC, everyday carry. Notice that this pistol is loaded. It's got the top serrations here. It has a gold bead sight in the front, a ledge rear so you can cock it from like the edge of a table or the edge of your boot or something like that. It has an ambidextrous safety, so it's good for a righty or a lefty. Very nice, very firm safety here. does not move easily you have to push it into place it does not seem to uh, come on when you don't want it to no matter what your grip is right this is nice and out of the way see how this one is cut as compared to the piece that they use on the Cabot gun 
this great big piece of metal attached to it right there. But back to this comparison between the two, notice that these are lock grips right here. So you got the aluminum lock grips right here, but the gun is just very, very nicely finished. Everything about it, the trigger is very well placed in there. You've got front strap checkering. You've got the back strap done back here. Wonderful job on the grip safety. Look at the finish on the grip safety. Very, very nice. Let's check about uh, the interaction between the grip safety and the trigger. Wow. About 15%. So very tuned. Prove it. There you go. That is a wonderful one piece magwell there. Very, very well done. I mean, you name it and this thing's got it. These are both steel on steel guns, so they're going to be coming in somewhere around 35, 36 ounces. I think you go 29 or 30 ounces on the commanders that are aluminum frame with a steel slide and barrel, of course, up on top. Stainless steel on stainless steel or steel on steel here. And I think you're at around 34 and a half, 35, 36 ounces. So these are going to be slightly more heavy than your normal run of the mill aluminum frame guns. But that also means they're going to last longer for you on these type of firearms right here. And it is smooth, very smooth. Let's talk about the trigger. Very little take up right there. It is, ah, it has a little bit of movement uh, side to side. Let's get a little closer here. Whoops, what did I just do? I just accidentally threw it into safety. I'm not exactly sure. It'll be on camera though, so. Let's take the safety off. So anyway, back to the trigger, very tiny movement side to side and up and down again, just a hair going both directions is very well put in there, the trigger itself. There's the take up and, ooh, four pounds, maybe less. Great reset. And again, uh, three pounds, 10 ounces would be my guess. It might be lighter than that. Again, this pistol was completely gone over from Rob Shalin, who no longer works there. I was surprised to hear that through the grapevine. Two pounds, 14.4 ounces. Two pounds, 9.1 ounces, and one last one. So we're under three pounds on all of these so far. No, three pounds, 14 ounces, that can't be right. That had to be me. One last one right here. Two pounds, 4.3 ounces. So yeah, under two and a half pounds. I did it again. How's that happening? How am I accidentally putting that on? Is it from my grip? There it was. So my skin here of my hand is pressing into the far end of the safety and it's putting it on accidentally. I have never had that happen before. Let's just prove to you that I'm, I've got it, my hand with a high grip right here, like I normally would, right? That's stuff. And that stops it. And as soon as my hand pushes hard enough on the safety over here, it is throwing it in to safety on.
So is it only when I have it tipped like this because my hand comes a little closer on that end? Anyway, I can't recreate it again, but it happened three times. Well, that's a little concerning. Let's take a look at that and just, so let's, it doesn't seem like it goes up easy. I can't even, I guess I can. Oh, I see. So if I'm pressing in here, if I'm pressing in right here, with my skin of my hand, look at the difference in the design. That's amazing. I don't know what to say about that. That could be a, a real problem for your personal safety. Weird. Do I have any other 1911s around here? Okay, here's what I'm carrying today. Dan Wesson. This is a hot gun. My Dan Wesson today, and it has a very similar safety to the one that's used on the cabot right there. So, let me make this safe real quick. A ramp barrel on a Dan Wesson vigil I bought five or six years ago. So anyway, ramp barrel fully built around the ramp itself. This is a steel slide aluminum frame. And yes, it's dirty and yes, it was loaded. But the reason why I wanted to do it was obviously I have never had this accidentally go on and it it's 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 tough. It's uh I think, you know, having it this way pays dividends, guys. You don't want it to flick on or flick off too easily. You want it to be tough. So pistols off and I'm going to try to put my hand any place I can to try to put pressure on this. Let's see if I can make it go up on its own and you can't. Okay. You have to make a real furted effort, a real effort to get that safety on or off. And it's very important if you're carrying these guns for self-defense. Okay, I wasn't thinking that was gonna happen or be an issue. I knew there was other things about it I just didn't like besides the terrible back and forth that we had from the guys at Cabot and the guys at Alchemy Arms. You know, it is what it is. I'm not going to bring that back up. I'm not going to beat a dead horse. Definitely moving on from that. So, but a concern. Is that fair? A concern. I think that is more than fair to say it is a concern. And you may not notice it. How many times did I try to mess with it to make it happen? And it came on, the safety came on three times on its own zero times with this and zero times with uh, Dan Wesson. So I've got an ambi here too. So this side is that way and this side is this way. And let's just play with it for a few minutes here, a few seconds and see if I can make it come on on its own. No matter where I'm putting my hand, my finger up against it here. No, no, sure can't. Just a wonderful job overall on every part of this 1911. Absolutely beautiful. And for less money, you get the overall polishing of the entire gun and you pay less than you pay for this right here. Again, this is all forged parts, no skimping done on this 1911 at all. Top of the slide is done. The mainspring housing is done. The front strap is done. I've looked at this gun so many times, there's really nothing that's not absolutely perfect on it. It's only been to the range once. I plan to do a lot more with it over the time that I'm gonna own it, but it's a beautiful gun. And this particular one set up this particular way, I think it was like $5,300, but you can get into it a little bit more basic 
for about $4,300. And $1,000 down is the ordering process for them. It's $1,300 down for an ordering process for this one. And then you pay the balance when they come in, of course. So that's how that looks. Check out the triggers. This is the three star approach from Cabot that I really do like. It's a solid trigger and it takes a little time, a little money probably involved in cutting those stars into that trigger, but I did kind of like that from them. The ambi safety other than coming on uh, when you don't want it to. I did notice that it's not as taunt. See? It's just not as positive as the Spardella. The standard gun will come with blued finish and polished flats, so the sides will be polished, but this overall gun is completely done. So this pistol right here that I'm holding is more of a $5,000 gun from them, where you can get into this model for about $4,300. Outfitted the same as this Cabot gun right here would be $4,500, because this Cabot gun does have an ambi safety on it right here, but there's no magwell like it is here on the Spardella Commander. So talking about the Spardella a little bit more, it has a polished feed ramp. Do I have a light? Normally I do. Where's a light when you need it, right? There you go. You can kind of see in there that it's polished. As you can tell by looking at them right here, they both have full link guide rods. So that's a gimme. They both have ambi safeties. So if you're a righty or a lefty, we ordered them that way, I'm sure, because my son is a lefty. So whenever we have the opportunity to special order a gun, we almost always do it with an ambidextrous safety. And that's so it's lefty friendly. I also may want to shoot it left-handed. And so I'd feel a little bit more comfortable being a righty shooting it left-handed. So I do take that in consideration. The slide on this gun right here is hand fit to the frame. It has a tuned extractor, just like this one is supposed to have. And it was done uh, after it was sent back. Everything was gone over on the Cabot and brought up to the standard it should be at. Lowered and flared ejection port, and of course the back of the slide and the grip safety are blended. And if you have not seen perfection, there it is. I mean, it's just perfect. Can't even tell that there is an extractor right there. Everything looks very well done. And This is very well done too. Let's check out the cabinet. Pretty nice back here, I got to say. Really no issues with the way it is fit in the back of the gun. We had a bunch of issues with this and this has been worked on and it's better. All right, guys, let's talk about the pistols a little bit more in detail. Obviously, the Cabot guns is made in stainless steel. So overall, it looks, you know, really good cosmetically. Their pistols look really nice. This is a $5,200 pistol. Most of the offerings are between $5,300 and almost $10,000. Mostly, it's in the cosmetics of the gun. This one now runs pretty good. I'm not a big fan of it because of all the issues it had to get it to this point, but you gotta give it to it, right? They do a good job as far as the looks and the cosmetics of the pistol itself. Since Cabot guns and Alchemy arms are pretty well known in the USA and Spardella is a new one, I wanna read a little bit from their website saying that they are a small shop in West Haven, Vermont, making custom 1911 handguns. We began our journey machining precision parts for the aerospace industry and now use the same equipment and techniques to manufacture high quality pistols. We combine tight tolerance machining and traditional hand fitting to produce handguns for sport, duty, and self-defense. Our slides in our frames are machined from forgings for extreme durability. These are not production guns. These are true hand-built custom firearms. We finish our guns using the traditional hot salt bluing process, which leaves a beautiful dark luster to the pistol. 
I'm going to go ahead and close up this video talking about what you get and uh, how you're treated. Young Brent and I were both not happy with the way we were treated from Cabot Arms and Alchemy Arms. It just was not a good overall experience and I'm just going to leave it at that. These guys over here that are making Spardella custom pistols have been wonderful to deal with and the pistols have not needed to go back for anything. I think that's the goal, right? The goal is you make such a good firearm and you make sure everything is done and done correctly for your $5,000. You can get into this gun for roughly almost $1,000 less than you can get into this gun. So if you're wondering which one is more bang for your buck, the Spardella beats the Cabot by almost a grand. A little bit less to uh, put in for your down payment to get them to take your order to make your gun. And like I said, I don't have any experience as far as returning the gun because there's been no reason to return the two that I own. They have been absolutely flawless. It has a nice ledge on it too. Looks very, very similar, doesn't it? So you can rack it off a table or rack it off your boots or whatever you want. The safety, as you can tell here, a little bit easier to flick on and flick off. Match grade barrels on both, just in case I didn't say that. Nothing up front, but these are pretty good. A little sharp if you catch them at an angle, but they're pretty good. Is it as good as this? Hmm. Very close. They're both really slick and well put together. Put some oil on them, right? Make sure you do that. I always did like these grips on them here. The front is done here. Front strap done very nicely, very uniform, very professionally done. The mainspring housing, same thing. The grip back here was a nightmare. You might be able to tell it's definitely had some work done to it to try to get it to the part where it will pass muster for a almost uh, you know custom-like level gun. Still, if it's uh, not pressed in, you've got all kinds of edges and stuff here. Once it's pressed in, it's, it's quite a bit better. Okay, so if this one is good, it's because it was worked on. Let's go ahead and prove how the interface is between the grip safety and the trigger. Very little movement in that trigger until it firms up. And then, yeah, about 40%, maybe 50. This is after it was worked on. And let's prove it. There you go. You want to spend your $5,000 on a gun that not everybody has. This is number 57. This one is going to be a lot more limited. This one more people know about because the company is more widely known. There's no question about it. Between their meteorite guns and some of their upper higher end guns that are well over $10,000, this one's going to be out there. But if you're not about that show and tell type bullshit, then this is your gun. This is your worker's gun. This gun's better made. This gun has flawless capability. No need to send it back. The guys there are tremendous. If, you're, if I was going to spend my $5,000 all over again, I would buy less, less bears and no cabots and just buy a couple of these, which I'm lucky enough to own right now. This thing just is tighter all the way around. It just feels like one piece of metal when you're touching it. Three pounds, 3.7 ounces. And one more. Let's go ahead and hear the rack. And three pounds, 7.2 ounces. Already went over price for you guys. If you're interested in that, the differences between the two guns is fairly obvious to me. I think the Cabots have a nice outer appearance. I think that's where they really seem to thrive, the outside appearance. I think this is absolutely beautiful too in the all over high gloss bluing. You can get it on the normal ones that start at $3,500. They, I believe, just have the sides that are gonna be high gloss blued and then the rest of it is not. Cabot, we have three or four right now and we probably will sell those off, I would think. The only one I think I would try to talk young Brett into keeping would be he has a left-handed version. That's a pretty amazing Cabot lefty and he bought seven or eight magazines that are specific to the left-handed model. And so that's another reason why I think you should keep it. But other than that, these other Cabots will probably be going bye-bye sometime this year or next year, or when I have the time to try to spend some time with selling them or whatnot. I have no desire to keep them long-term, all of them anyway. So this one will probably be sold. Of the two that I have, what is that called? I prefer the Gran Torino over the National Standard. And the Gran Torino 
SS now has a retail price of $52.95. So when you look at that compared to the national standard, which is also $52.95, you're spending the same amount of money. If I was going to buy one or the other, I definitely would get the government size Gran Torino SS at $5,295 and take a pass on this gun altogether. But that's my feelings on it. Even handle them now after this one's been completely redone and tricked out by their best gunsmith, my Gran Torino. I think it's a better gun. It's a better built gun. Anyway, uh, anything else I want to cover on these? These are both 45 ACP. You can get them in 9mm and some of them offer in 38 Super. I know Spardella Arms does, but I'm not so sure about Cabot Guns, whether they have that or not. I think it's uh, 9mm and 45 over there at Cabot Guns. No Alchemy Arms here on the table today. Maybe they'll make another appearance. If you're curious on different types of 1911s we have or our recommendations on which ones we think are better and examples of said customs, go check out the Custom 1911 Buyer's Guide, Part 2 especially. Part 1 if you want to hear about some of the horror stories. Both of those videos are highly recommended. And then if you're into less bears at all, I did one called the Top 5 45 ACP Less Bear Custom 1911s. It's only been seen like 7,000 times in the last six months and that's a really good video and shows several different top less bear government size 1911s that we really, really like in 45 ACP. So maybe you can find some answers there. Other than that, if you want to spend less, buy yourself a Springfield. We're starting to get into some T-Sauce or T-Sash 1911s and we're catching some slack from other viewers on that because of course they all want everything to be American made. They're not afraid that their pocketbooks are bigger and they can afford some of this more expensive stuff. I think that's great. Obviously I own it myself, but there are a lot of people that want to buy guns that are in the Springfield Armory, Mill Spec, the T-Sash, Taurus. So we are going to be bringing you some of that too on the channel. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel here on YouTube, the Beretta 9mm USA channel, and of course, our smaller brother channel, the CZ 9mm USA channel. We'll see you guys on the next video. Be safe out there, and remember, your Second Amendment is worth protecting.